TV officially on air with the one and only, just kidding, not the one and only, the two and only, Eckhart Siblings. Guys, slide on over. Hey! <laughs> Alex and Alana Eckhart are here in the studio in New York City. They've journeyed 3,122 miles from sunny California to join us today. Alex, <laughs> Alana, real pleasure to have you on B T V. It's just the thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, real pleasure to have you guys on BTV. Thank you for coming. Um, super excited that you're here. Alex has been my nearest and dearest friend for uh, since we were 21 years old, so 13 years. And, um, and that's how I met his lovely sister, Alana. Both of them doing amazing work in the wellness world, healing uh, through their own cultural experiences and enrichments. And we're gonna get, jump into their story a little bit today, but first of all, I just wanna thank you guys for coming in today. So tell us a little bit about you coming from Northern California, the wine country, and what role did holistic health and wellness and culture have in your upbringing? And then we'll jump into what you're doing fast forward to today. Sure thing. Well, Alana and I both grew up uh, in our family business, and it was a chiropractic, massage, nutrition, and holistic health clinic that saw sometimes a couple hundred people a day. It was uh, started just my dad in the front doing chiropractic, my mom in the back doing massage therapy. She was also an emergency room nurse, so she'd seen the full gamut of maladies and injuries, and yep. as they spent more time together, they kind of drilled down into a holistic approach to healing, and not only a holistic approach, a preventative approach. So not letting disease kind of take you down and have to recover from, but actually building a lifestyle around preventative wellness. So we grew up in this office, you know, arranging the magazines in the front and filing the paperwork, and eventually we kind of started working in the clinic, and you know, as much as we probably thought we were going to both do dramatically different things, we couldn't help but be a product or environment. And even though we have taken our own spin on wellness, we're both very much involved uh, still in a natural lifestyle. Myself with my cultural pursuits and pulling the nuggets of uh, worldly wellness and sharing it. And Alana currently through movement, yoga, food, and uh, her latest endeavor, Goatlandia. And so that's a great segue into you, Alana. Goat. Landia mm -hmm. to our audiences. So, Lana, without further ado, tell us what well, is Goatlandia. As the spokesperson here at, at for Goatlandia, yeah. um, we do a lot of things. We do a lot of different things. My main role at Goatlandia, personally, is um, I would say goat yoga is a really big, big part of what so we do. So, tell us what Goatlandia is first. Goatlandia is a farm animal sanctuary. So, we rescue farm animals who would otherwise be slaughtered for no reason. Maybe they have a buck tooth or an extra udder, or maybe they're just not well enough to show. Maybe they're born with a defect. Um, they'll be sent to slaughter. Most males who are born are simply slaughtered because they're males. They can't produce milk or meat um, that is prized. So we rescue these animals from slaughter. And currently we have 53 animals. We have 33 chickens, uh, five pigs, we have 16 goats, one blind baby lamb, three dogs, and two humans, wow. all on two acres in Snow wow. County. So a few really interesting things that I want to just kind of dissect that you're saying here. You know, our audience is a range of people from very, very young high school students to, you know, experienced executives and corporations. Um, I think that a question that I get a lot from people is two parts. Number one, how important is college? for me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you chose the path where you didn't go to college, you just jumped right into actually practitionership yes. of working in the thing that you love. Yes. So I want to hear a little bit about how that experience played out for you and what advice you would offer people. Absolutely. The second thing is um, you have been able to marry a few of your interests mm -hmm. into your thing now. And I, I'm a big believer in this thing that I call idea sex, which is bringing different ideas that you have together to have sex, and the birth child of those, mm. that sex is the thing that you like really that. love. So tell us a little bit about what that looks like for you now, and where do you see that going moving mm. forward? And I think this is actually a good question, not the college yeah. question, but the, the yeah. intersection, you're doing the same thing with Natural Traveler. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I myself didn't go to college. I was dancing all throughout high school. Um, and I decided instead of being a dancer that I wanted to cook and that was due to inspiration from the restaurant that I was cooking at it 
kind of came over time that I didn't want to go to college and that I wanted to pursue cooking. But and not even culinary school, so formal education he's asking. That. Exactly. So instead of actually going to culinary school, I decided to go on to the real version of that. So I always tell people when I when I, I say I didn't go to culinary school, they say, oh, do you regret it? And I said, you know, there are people out there who have gone to culinary school, they have better knife skills than me. You know, maybe they have some techniques on certain sauces and certain French things, but I will say that my on-the-line kitchen experience has definitely shaped me as a person mm -hmm. um, and as a chef because I didn't go to culinary school. I would be a completely different cook, you know. I would rather not look at a recipe and see what we have in the pantry and the refrigerator and what's at the farmer's market, what's in season, and work with that instead of trying to figure out and shop for certain things that are set. Yep. I'm more of a kind of rustic chef, I guess you could say, yep. with um, my pop-up back in San Francisco. So the pop-up is an interesting thing for me. I've, I've been following your work for, for many years now and also through Alex. Um, you recently just did a really successful event for Planned Parenthood yes. in San Francisco. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Um, Tell us what a pop-up is for people who don't know, and then um, you just raise a whole bunch of money yeah. doing what you love. What was the secret behind how that went down? The secret was support from so many people. People coming together for one thing, one cause, and that's just to help people who are in need right now. Um, we couldn't have done this event without my brother, for instance. He yep. got on social media. He talk to people. From there, we had a local beautiful dahlia farmer come and drop off three full buckets of organic California dahlia. Dahlia is the size of your head. I mean, she just came and did this out of the kindness of her heart and something like that would cost us over $300 that we would have to take out of what we would give straight to Planned Parenthood. We had 100% of, of, of our produce donated from local farmers, organic farmers who just wanted to give us produce. We didn't pay for one dollar worth of produce. And so this was a, a pop-up for a cause, and then mm -hmm. I want to jump into the social media thing that you said that's interesting. Mm -hmm. This is a pop-up for a cause, but you've been doing these pop-ups all over the place yes. for a while. How difficult, like if I'm a chef mm -hmm. and I want to do that, mm -hmm. what are some tips that you would give me? How, how difficult is it to do that? Mm -hmm. What are your tips for success to actually monetize that skill for yourself? Yeah, that's a good question. We get that a lot actually. My business partner, Gracie Schatz, who's back in California right now. So uh, her and I kind of came up with the idea on a whim. She was a butcher at a all-female run butcher shop up in Bernal Heights in San Francisco and there was an extra room called the Utter Room, U-D-D-E-R, um, and we went in there, there's 25 seats in a beautiful fireplace yep. right attached to the um, kitchen of this butcher shop, and we had this idea that sparked, hey, this room isn't being used, what do we do, can we do something in it? So from there, we kind of started our pop-ups, and we realized that we could do that anywhere, and if you make these connections with people who are open to new things, that it actually brings business to where they are. So the, the piece that you said about social media, Alex jumping on social media, yeah. Um, Alex, I saw your post about the pop-up. I, I know that it led to some sponsorship and donations. Mm -hmm. How do you, what is your view right now as someone who is beginning on this natural traveler trajectory where you're influencing people? Um, and it's funny because you have 713 followers on Instagram today, which is gonna, or maybe less, doesn't matter. The point is this, <laughs> I see the stuff that you post and people are interacting. How do you, as someone who is into the holistic wellness cultural world, which in large part depends on being out in the world, right, and being present with being out in the world, how do you reconcile technology's place in that advancement of your mission? Sure. Well, I'd say that one of the themes that run through that runs through my feed is using that technology to educate people, to inspire them to do things without the phone. Yeah. And, for example. I had a couple interns this summer helping me out with a natural traveler and we would take breaks to go outside and take our shoes off and ground in the earth but we wouldn't only do that but we'd post about it and talk about yeah. it and I even saw you were inspired to I post. I earthed and, because uh, of you. So we I try, did. yeah, we try and do that in as many ways as we can and um, just trying to think, you know, what I kind of said in my, uh, the video post I did for Alana's pop-up recently was that as much as I love being entertained on social media, my absolute favorite part of these platforms is our ability to do what Alana was just doing for the last five, 10 minutes, which was talk about all these incredible projects and incredible people yep. that come together to make things happen. Yep. And just using the leverage of this expansive network that grows every day is what pushes me to pull myself out of a natural world that I work really hard to create. I mean. 
it's sometimes really hard to pull yourself from the moment, but I know it's for a greater purpose and I know that it's my opportunity to touch more than the person that I'm with, which I do try and stay present in doing, yep. but I think that's just kind of a part of our modern struggle. And uh, But again, I'm always thinking of that bigger purpose and that bigger picture, which is that perhaps my content will pull someone out of a hunched, postured, semi low energy moment and say, you know what, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go pick a piece of fruit and I'm going to peel with my eyes closed and I'm going to, you know, do something weird that pulls you out of your everyday environment. Guys, we need to start peeling fruit with our eyes closed every morning. That needs to become Using part of our senses. morning thing. A little exercise that I did one morning, I went to the window, it was so bright, I just wanted to close my eyes, but at the same time, I wanted to open this orange. So I close my eyes, I'm opening the orange, and I'm feeling the vibration of the pith pulling from the fruit, and I'm smelling the oils in the air, and I was like, nice. wow. This is a sensory experience that I wouldn't have otherwise, you know, experienced had this moment not happened. I wanted to share it, you know, believe it or not, a couple of people actually said, hey, I tried that. And I guess that's what I'm looking to do is to get people to try new things because that's what drives me and that's what my entire kind of mission in life is, is to find new things, always be learning and share those things. And I don't think that we'll ever run out of new things to find because yeah. new things are being created every day, like the closed eyed orange opening ritual. <laughs> so don't forget about that. The, this you've done now, I mean, you've basically been, first of all, let me just say how I met this character. Um, we were both studying abroad in Florence, Italy. And I did this thing called Scambio de Conversazione, which means conversation exchange, where you teach someone English for an hour and they teach you Italian for an hour. And I was secretly hoping to like meet a really beautiful Italian woman. And, like, I think we love. both were. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> that didn't happen. I got like this like crazy hipster like rock star. Like everything was black, like black, so many piercings. It was crazy. I loved her. She was amazing. Roxana. Was <laughs> and Roxana had a friend named Julia. And Roxana says, hey, I'm gonna, I want to introduce you to my friend Julia. We're going to go to a cafe. And I was like, perfect. So I, go I don't to want to pick up here because yep. the story started six months previous where, like Brian, I was seeking something additional than yep. just kind of like the surface level experience. So we went, I remember it was like kind of a wrinkled paper on a cork board in a random language yep. building. It was like, scambio di conversazione, let meet an Italian, teach them English. So I sign up and I was partnered with a girl named Julia, who like Brian said, was a hard rock metalhead. And you know, she was amazing and we you know, became great friends and we spent the first semester meeting at church steps and by the river and having these great chats. And then towards the end of the semester, she said, my friend really wants to have a partner too. You know, can one of your friends come? And I was like, well, the semester is ending. I think you have to go through the school, like maybe next semester. So I never thought of it. But then beginning of that next semester, she's like, hey, my friend found someone at your school. Let's all meet up. So shall I continue? Yeah, continue. So I didn't, I didn't know that part about she was uh, she had been looking before. Within the first week of school, uh, I go to meet them at the bookstore where we met, bookstore cafe. So it was myself, Julia, and her friend, and we get into this really great conversation. Granted, I'm already a semester in, so my Italian's pretty good. It's really good. I've been focusing. It's really, really good. I really yeah. wanted to differentiate myself from all the other foreign students that were, uh, you know, maybe partying a little bit more than they were studying, which is fine, but. I was really obsessed with with uh, this language immersion. So the three of us are having a great chat, and up walks Mr. Brian. <laughs> and rather than kind of all stop speaking Italian, speaking English, we just continue in Italian. And I don't think Brian knew that uh, Julia's friend was bringing someone. I think she just thought. I think you just thought. Just uh, meet up. Just, yeah. yeah. So we're speaking Italian. Brian sits down. This is like his first week, first two weeks. So his Italian is limited. But he sits down. We start talking. And it occurs to us that Brian doesn't realize that I'm an American student and he just thinks he's chilling with a group of Italians, which is really like an honor. For but he American. also, like, look at his hair, and then he also had like this, like this Italian like hat on. He looked super well, you know, Italian. Like, it was a fascia, it was like a little bandana thing. Okay. Don't worry about it, they sold them in the markets. Fascia. Long story short, because I think we have a couple other surprises on the show today. We uh, basically just get into this conversation where Brian starts asking me a little bit about myself. Did you pretend like you're Yeah, I was yeah, just like, I'm like a little time. bit student yeah. from yeah. Florence and I love rock and we're all just talking and laughing. We're interviewing Brian. And I have no idea like half the shit he's saying. But no you know, idea. I'm starting to take a liking to the guy and I'm like, I really admire this guy's, you know, 
ability to seek these opportunities out, I'm starting to feel bad. So about 10 minutes later, I just kind of turned and was like, he goes, literally he goes, bro, I'm from San Francisco. I'm, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate, I, 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 lying is not something I do well or aspire to do well. And so from that moment, you know, he, you should have seen his face. I love surprising Brian. Yeah, clearly. And um, speaking of surprises, you know, you may be curious what we're doing in New York City. I mean, California people typically <laughs> like staying there. New Yorkers like staying there. Well, we had um, in theme with that surprise, an incredible surprise that Alana and I have been planning for two of our best friends, also known as companions, Brian on my right, and Sky, Sky on my right. The point of this segment of the show is just to kind of Give homage to the power of friendship and companionship. Alana and I are both based in California. Sky and Brian have both been based in New York for a while. And, uh, you know, Californians don't typically visit New York so often. I know it's just so nice out in California. But <laughs> New York is amazing. And uh, for the last few months, Alana and I have been planning this epic surprise of both of our companions. And on Monday, we just wham bammed it one after another and Mind it was blowing. a thrilling day <laughs> and uh, we're so happy to all be together. We've been linking up for many years and uh, to kind of bring this together in a moment, uh, as Brian has said with The Natural Traveler, we like to incorporate ritual and nothing brings people together like food. Alex, so, before you do the food thing, can I put on the uh, Natural yes, Traveler Yes, so on gift? our last shoot down in Ecuador, South America, we were in the Andean market of Otavalo, where some of the most colorful <laughs> and vibrant weave, uh, woven items of clothing are found. Put this on And uh, nothing screamed Brian Rashid more than this purple and pink um, <laughs> so true. chompa mm -hmm. type sweater. I love it. And uh, in addition to that, we yeah. have oh, a. Uh, that looks great. Okay. Have a seat. Thanks. Thanks we're, we're hungry over here. <laughs> okay, and, so back um, to the surprise of the food. Yes. So, you know, um, Alana and I, Alana being the culinarian that she is, and me being the uh, tag along. No, I love to eat as well. He's an amazing cook. Thank you. Um, we came across something called baka. baka. And rather than us speak on it, we thought we'd have. Uh, soon to be world renowned speaker Santa Victoria come and tell Santa. us what she's learned about this New York standard. Santa. So come on in <laughs> and why don't you tell us what you found out about the babka. Hey guys, what's up? I found out so much about babka. Number one, and probably most important, is that it means little grandma in oh, Eastern oh, Yiddish, oh, oh. in Ukrainian, well, and in Russian. So shout out to all the little grandmas out there who <laughs> love to cook babka and who Thank love you. to eat it. We wouldn't have it without you guys. And you guys probably know babka from Seinfeld, from Orphan Black, but most importantly from all the Jewish um, delis. <laughs> yeah, delis. <laughs> you want to give a shout out to where we got this too. Yeah, of course. Give it a shout out. So uh, yeah, we just happened to be well, placed cool. in the Polish neighborhood of Greenpoint with our good friend Sonia, and Love she you, said, Sonia. "Make sure, make sure you get over to Frank Frankel's." Right. Well, she didn't talk like that at all. She's actually very cool. She does not talk like a leprechaun. But if she but, was a little Jewish babka, she would. <laughs> Alana, why don't you uh, slice this? Okay. Uh, Sanjay, will you have some almond milk for us, uh, you? You know, this you wouldn't be a almonds. natural traveler uh, shoot without some nut milk. This being, uh, you know, <laughs> a Goatlandia experience. You're an adaptable human, Santa. So, Alana, while you're doing that, I also want to, first of all, thank you guys so much for coming and surprising yeah, me. And so Sky, so thank you for coming and being on the show. You're an amazing human. I want Sky just to say hello and yes, introduce Sky. yourself. Who Sky's are you? an amazing dancer. <laughs> she loves the camera, from... if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Sky, just really, just really quickly, just really quickly, tell us your Come name, plus, what you're doing plus. here in New York. You're living your dream as well. You're That's absolutely amazing, 100% right. so positive about energy. About One of my favorites, it's all three of these people are some three of my favorite people in the whole world. Sky, tell us just a quick thing about you for um, those who don't know yet. It's crazy. I only like being on camera when I'm dancing, so this is a strange moment for me. Out of your um, My name is Sky. <laughs> I'm from the Bay Area. Reppin'. Reppin' this nice t-shirt today. Um, I moved to New York two and a half years ago to pursue my dance career. Which is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half years later, you're still here. So I'm still here. Really is I'm still dancing. Sky, what's your favorite thing about New York City? It's nice. besides <laughs> you. I mean, goodness, Brian. Um, probably, probably the dance classes I take. It's probably really cliche, but the um, dance scene in San Francisco is very, very small. 
Um, it doesn't take a lot to figure out what is what, and I feel like I've been here for two and a half years and there's still a million people I want to take from and a million opportunities for me to keep pursuing, so it's nice to know that it feels limitless right now. Where, yeah. Um, in San Francisco, I felt like there was a ceiling, and I had hit it after being there for three years. And just the last thing I wanted to ask you guys quickly before we before we eat is, you know, the role of the people that we have in our lives I think is so important. And one of my other favorite people in the world is Alana and Alex's father, Harvey. Harvey. Um, you know Harvey well. <laughs> Harvey is also a natural traveler. The original natural traveler. The original traveler. natural traveler. And Harvey okay. is one of these guys who just has the heart of gold and is, I don't even, 55, 60, I don't even know how old he is, but like you meet him and you think he's like 21. <laughs> but with like, with like 40 years of life experience, like it's like the heart of a 21 year old who has literally just like been dropped on the planet for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like that's the level of curiosity that this man has. Mm -hmm. And then, but with like so many years of wisdom and like real passionate, compassionate care for, for people's like most important thing in their health. So for me, I wanted to spend a minute kind of thanking Harvey for bringing these two people into the world mm -hmm. and then for bringing Sky into the, the, the mix because the, I believe that you attract what you are and you have made these um, two beautiful children into the, to, to the mold that they have. Um, I just think that, you know, and this is something that I've really come to appreciate more over the last five years as, as I've been kind of doing this journey of entrepreneurship is we really are shaped so much by our parents mm -hmm. and I think that the quicker we can all resolve to find the good things in that relationship I mean we all have things with our parents yeah. that we don't like like that's just normal human behavior for the, all of time and it will be for the rest of time but I think that being able to identify you know what what, what I've enjoyed about this conversation is celebrating you know Mama E celebrating Harvo celebrating the things that they brought into your life and all of you all of us being able to identify, like my life has drastically become significantly better when instead of focusing on the things I didn't like about my parents, it's, instead of that put 1000% of my energy into being grateful for the things that I did. And that's been just a huge game changer for me in a business world and also in a personal world. So I think that that could be something that would be, you know, kind of fun for everyone to think about. Um, and then just really finally, and I've said finally three times, but really finally, <laughs> Alex, I just realized we haven't even talked about your project. Sure, I mean, I was incredibly fortunate to link up with a production company named Mac House Productions, and they're based out in the Bay yeah. Area, um, working with That's all the say. top companies in California and now around the world, and just uh, working phenomenal. day in and day out alongside top-notch professionals, learning from them in the creative field. I am passionate about archiving and documenting and sharing the nuggets of world culture swaying in the health and wellness regard, but something like this, a, a recipe that's been passed on generation after generation and now ends up on the 17th floor of a Manhattan, you know, skyscraper from the kitchen of potentially a Russian or, you know, Belarusian, uh, you know, babka. babka. <laughs> um, I just love grandma. watching that spread of culture across the world. So and um, this would be considered kind of like a treat at the end of a, of a, of a journey. Yep. But uh, you know, our time in New York, we've when we show up in a place on the Natural Traveler, we like to find health pioneers, people that are going against the grain to do something outside of the ordinary that maybe are compromising or sacrificing a bit of profit for a higher quality of food to spread a message of wellness and vibrant living. So we have been exploring different yoga studios and parks and trying to find clean air and trying to find you know, maybe neighborhoods that aren't as well frequented <laughs> to get those stories. And you know, local New Yorkers have helped us along the way. And it doesn't matter if we drop into Europe, South America, there's always a story of wellness to be told because wellness is one of the oldest mainstays of culture. Yeah. And without health, you have nothing. So it's typically <laughs> something well ingrained and the diversity of wellness traditions in different cultures, it's an endless well, an endless well of wellness. So it's always exciting to hear someone's you know, uh, that's toastable right there. Let's yeah, sure. Cheers to let's some cheers to that. And, and then, then and then we'll get, we'll get, we'll get, let's bottom. keep rolling, Nick. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you for having us. Sure. Yeah, Thank you guys right? for coming. Thank you for this ride. Yeah, I watching. would have happy to take a bite of mine, but we're here in uh, New York, New York. York. Right. So I think to close this out, I would like to just share one, my final piece, which is all, and I do mean all, of my successes 
personally and professionally have always 100, 1,000, 1 million percent been correlated to the quality of people that I have around me. Mm -hmm. Always. This has been an absolute soulmate, soul feeder for me for the last 13 years. He has been my rock for so many very important life decisions. Really the person outside of my family that knows me better than anyone in the world. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you are here, my brother, I really, really appreciate. And the fact that you have been there all those years, I really, really appreciate. And I, I wish, my wish for all of you is that you can find that. Because if you can just find one person, and, and, and if you're an introvert, then get online. Like there's so many ways for people to connect now. You're not alone anymore, ever. There are so many, even if it doesn't look like this, even if we didn't meet in a cafe, maybe you meet on Meetup, maybe you meet on Tinder, maybe you meet on Snapchat, maybe you meet on Instagram. I don't care how you meet somebody, but please try and find that one person that, that really knows you and understands you. Because what I can tell you is this, going to advice for a bunch of different to a bunch of different people gets exhausting and dangerous because in order for someone to offer you really good advice, they have to know everything about you. Like, how am I gonna be able to offer you guys advice if I don't know all the nooks and crannies of what makes you you and your situation you? The beautiful thing about this, and I think that hopefully Alex would say the same to you, is that it can just be a phone call where it's one minute and a major life decision is made because we don't have to spend the five hours going through the context because we spent the last 13 years doing that. Mm. So I think find, just really try to find that person for you. And if you don't have that person, then find something kind of close. And if you don't have anything kind of close, then start to really spend some time on your relationships. We spend an immense amount of time building this. I know that you two spend an immense amount of time building this. I know you two have spent an immense amount of time building this. Like this is no different than business. Like it takes real sacrifice and real investment and sometimes you agree and sometimes you don't agree and sometimes you clash and sometimes you love each other but at the end of the day at the core of all of it there is just a genuine concern for the quality of life of that person so I really want to thank you for being that person for me for so many years right. and I wish that for all of you guys. To companion. To companion. Yeah. Remember it's your hour, it's your life, it's your dream to go get it because if you don't no one else will. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Thanks for watching.